happy because they'll still have Rek'Sai considered to be at least the top two there in the jungle, along with Lee Sin, so it's all right. But yeah, Dardoch won't get the ability just to go off on that Lee Sin. Yep. We saw him early on the Rek'Sai as well, and despite him having a decent performance, he was just, in general, as a League of Legends player, just kind of getting caught out a little bit. But there's the first pick of the Lee Sin, as we were talking about, but Karma as well for JT. Yeah, it's really fun to see how like the teams are. I look at these like two picks for almost like uh, everything in this pick and ban phase after the ban because like Zyra and Karma are two of them. When Zyra is banned, Karma's value goes up. Obviously, there's the least in Rek'Sai trade that we expect to happen where Rek'Sai goes over to Immortals and then their high priority Lee Sin then goes over to J-Team and that's a trade-off by giving the Syndra. So it's really interesting to see how they're kind of trading very, very highly contested picks and some of them just goes even further up in value due to the bans. Uh, when you do get banned, that Zyra Karma gets even better. I like Ash as well. I think Ash Syndra as a combination is great because they both provide such a strong laning phase, and Syndra can roam down to the Ash lane, and then you arrow them on the tower and you kill them really easily. So I think that combo is really strong. And there's the Rex site as well. So there was what there was the possibility of Immortal saying, "Hey, let's pick our jungler." further down the rotation as they were doing earlier in their drafts because that Lee Sin has been picked up but they just decide to secure it now and then actually get some uh, maybe counter picks depending on what J team lock in now. They have the support and jungler so they are thinking echo. about that echo. Yeah it's the echo hover, the AP echo mid lane for Fofo that we have already seen once today and what's important about it is while it is a smart pick against Syndra because you don't get like one shot and lane and you can actually like play very aggressive against her and push against her you can get ganked early game very easily. And if you do start falling behind on this Echo here, you end up having almost no impact in the game because it's going to be a 1-3-1 one, one composition from, from J-Team with Echo sitting in one side lane and split push of Teleport. And then like the more generic standard tank up top, it's probably gonna be Poppy Nautilus trade-off, like get Poppy here for Flame and then give away Nautilus for Morning. And then it's only the Echo you really have to worry about in that side lane. And there was the Ezreal as well with J Team, so that'll be their fourth lock in for their lineup there. And we are just waiting on the final two pickups from Immortals. We have that mid laner AD carry and jungler locked in so far, so we are looking for that support and top laner. Um, still Poppy on the board, Nautilus. You uh, can. Ma uh, Malkai is taken away. Yeah, you can play Sona here, like as a counter to Karma if you want to. Uh, Sona's not the greatest in the current meta though, sadly. Uh, range supports, you're kind of running out of some of them, like Janus and another one, but we do see Mortal say, you know what, we don't actually want to go for like the B tier range supports. Lux in like a melee support, which is stronger in team fights, but doesn't have the same lane pressure. We see most. Always like Rom against Ezreal though. Like, oh, you want to ulti? No, 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 no. Into my shield straight away. Oh, you want to actually hit some of my skill shots? Or with your skill shots? No, 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 no. Shield again. So really strong for like skirmish and, and dives. Like, Immortal's comp. If they can get Syndra and Rek'Sai to roam together, can kill the bot lane so easily. Like, it's not even funny after level 6 how easy it is for them to actually dive them on the tower with a, a tank or melee support now. Yeah, I mean, you're also talking about the roam potential as well from mid lane, uh, uh, Poe Belt on that Syndra, but we did have the final lock in. Finally! Will be Kennen into the top lane. Finally, Divisio. Yeah, Freak and I, we were whining about this, saying, come on, let's get some Kennen, let's get some Jace. They're still very strong picks up in the top lane against some of these tanks here. Kennen obviously, because it's a 1-3-1 one, one comp from, a, from, a, from J team, so they're gonna play this full split push game. Prop for Kennen is his advantage early game very quickly disappears against the Poppy because Poppy reaches a point where she's unkillable. And yes, Kennen can still sit there and, and push from range and like kind of farm, but can still enter into team fights. And J team did use flanking really well in the last game we saw with double TP, we'll need to do the same here to win these team fights. J team will have to use everything that they cultivated so far in the tournament to try and bring down Immortals. Immortals looked incredibly good in their series early against Samsung. It will be very difficult to make this happen. However, they have the tools to do so. And they have the counter pick in the mid lane, their counter pick of the AP Echo. Yeah, we have to see if it works again for Fofo like last time, Poe build on Syndra though. If it does, I'll be impressed because Poe Belter He's a hard player to play against, especially on Syndra, which was such a high priority at Worlds and still on 6.21. You want to get into the game, Pulse? I would. That would be fantastic, Dispecio. Let's get into it. Let's get into game.
And we are on to the rift for our elimination match, our decider of Group A. Between Immortals and J Team, this will be a best of three. Winner will go on to the semi finals. Loser will be eliminated and be joining so Vega Squadron and taking a trip back home and have a nice holiday in Korea for the next couple of days. <laughs> that is definitely true. And it is our last BO3 today. Obviously, tomorrow we play Group B, exactly the same schedule. Two best of ones first into a winner's game and into a loser's game. And then, of course, the last two teams in the tournament or in the group will then face each other, like we see here with Immortals and J Team. And not that many surprises in the pick and ban phase, but a few curveballs with the cannon coming back in to the top lane after we've just seen tanks and tanks and tanks True. every single game. And really, J Team with this 1 3 1 composition looking to really play three lanes at once and then see if they can set up these sneaky, sneaky TP Many flanks like they did in the last series they played. Well, that's the hope. That's what we want to see here. We've got Darduck just starting in the bottom side of his jungle. And he's got the coverage as well from Cody's son. And Ollie, BB, heading on up to help his own jungler. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Flame will be facing down Morning on this cannon. As you mentioned, good to see uh, a not a tank top laner. So <laughs> Kenna will try and put the harass down onto Flame. But as we were just saying, in Champions Select, Flame gets a couple backs under his belt, gets that some fire cape or any arm item he really wants. In fact, anything really, and Poppy just becomes obnoxious. Yeah, basically, uh, the scaling of Poppy is pretty insane because obviously her armor and MR gets buffed even further, and she just becomes like unkillable. Uh, Kennen, while he's a strong laner, late game split pushing, it's hard for him to take down like these big tanks, and he wants to then get into the team fights instead and see if he can get to the Ash, get to the Syndra. Some of these very squishy low mobility picks. Midland Doors, we talked about like Echo. If you've never seen him against Syndra before, the reason he works is because he can push the lane and he can close the gap against Syndra very easily with his dash. And he can then use ulti against Syndra ulti. But you can camp him early, as we talked about in Champions League, and they're going for it. Oh, the flash, the knock of Dardock trying to make it happen. But the counter gang in from Archie. Almost the kill onto Poe Belter there. He'll have to flash away, burn that summoner. But likewise, Fofo will do the same. Yeah, this is exactly what we talked about in Champ Select. Playing against Echo mid means you need to just gank him early on to put him behind. Get him down, he takes a bit of time, he needs two items to be really powerful, both Proto Belt and Lich Bane. So get him down early so you can start grouping and don't have to worry too much about his split pushing. And that's exactly what Immortals tried to do here. Dalek started red buff, then took his crooks, got early level 3 and went straight for the gank. Sadly for Immortals, they didn't get a kill and end up trading flashes. Four flashes down after that first little gank in the mid lane, but you can still return as the Rex on. And that's the important thing. Burning those summoners and actually going back to the mid lane and trying to make that gank happen once again. And both for Darduck and actually they could potentially get a kill onto the opposing mid laner. Uh, and just because of how volatile that mid lane is and how it will affect those side lanes as they start to get to that level six point will definitely be worth it for them to uh, spend some more time there. But for now, both of them will return to the jungle, pick up their second buff. And Fofo will burn his teleport on the mid lane to get back. Yeah, important to note that Fofo didn't get any advantage by using his teleport here because obviously he had to recall after the gank very early on. Normally what happens in lanes where you have TP and they don't, like you want to play aggressive early on, like kind of trade HP with each other, try and get a little bit of a shove going, and then you early recall, get like a, a second Doran's ring or, or just like, so in this case get your first because obviously with Corruption Potion in there, and then return to lane with teleport and then just play super aggressive because the enemy has never has, hasn't based yet. So you want to just play aggro all the time, you have an advantage with the first back. And then when the guy finally recalls, you, sh you should be able to push in the wave to his tower and deny him some minions. That's typically how it goes with TP mid. But because he got ganked, he couldn't do it this time around. And now Dalek is back here as we talked about in this mid lane. Try and keep the echo down. There were some good wards being placed by J Team to spot Dalek though. He didn't actually get to see it himself. But once he gets that control ward out of the way, he can look for more plays. And it's super, super important for him more. It's a good start so far. Yeah. Oh, he's shot. He smells blood in the water. But it's actually Achi who's coming into mid lane now, along with Fofo. Connects the Q. Such an easy gank in the mid lane. Will result in first blood. And that really comes 
back now to Dada, kind of hovering around the, the lane, not going into the bush and actually seeing the control ward and killing it, because that simply meant now that Archie knew he had a free way towards the mid lane. He knew he could just walk past his own control ward, there's not a ward in that river, or in, in that little bush here, and there's a very small chance it's actually warded, and there's a no flash Syndra setting, so very easy gank for him to pull off, and it's so important you contest that vision early on when you trade summoner spells, J team got down the ward, and they used it. They picked up the first blood. Dardak, he was uh, just a couple of seconds too early to the party. There was no one at home. Went to the bottom side of the map, and unfortunately, enemy jungler was there to capitalize on a nice play from Fofo. So first blood to J team is uh, a nice start to this series for them. Oh, it's trying exactly to, uh, what you want. Yeah, exactly. Try and get that snowball lead. Get Kennen into the team fight. Try and just obliterate everyone on Immortals before they get rolling. The most important member on J-Team's team is that Echo in the mid lane because he's your main split pusher as well in the in the later stages of the game. He's the man who can jump on Syndra 24-7 and just chunk her down to like 20% HP instantly and then she's forced out of lane. Bot lane dive happening. Here comes Archie into the bottom lane. Got that TP as well from Morning. He's ready to go. Got that level 6. The slicing Maelstrom comes down. Cody's son and Oli back into the tower. What a Dragon's Rage from Archie as well. Dardog a little too late. Nice two more kills for J-Team. I love that setup. It all starts with Morning not using his teleport back to his lane. So he saved it. Flame used his TP back to lane. So then it's on cooldown. And then J-Team as soon as they level 6 with the jungler and the cannon. I just saying, let's go bot lane. Archie gets the level six action just when they go in for the play, and then just times the kick beautifully. Gets Cody Sun as well. What a nice setup, and it comes down to global advantage. You had the pushing priority because you're playing a range support versus a melee support, so you can force the enemy team on the tower, and that's a great start from J Team here. And it, it's all focused around the Lee Sin pick, the first rotation. When they gave away to Syndra, said, thank you very much. We want this jungle pick because we can then have the aggressive early game. I mean, Archie has really just been going off in this game. 100% kill participation, getting involved in this mid lane and now the bot lane. And in terms of mechanics as well, I mean, that bot lane die was just executed beautifully. Jay is going to walk right into Dark and uh, Ollie in his own jungle will force out his flash there. Did not want to uh, really get caught up in that, but Archie will come down himself. And ward away Dardock and Ollie. And mid lane was also trying to react. So for now, blue buff is safe, has been warded. So Dardock has the potential to steal and is still hanging around the bot side. So got to be cognizant of that. And we hit the key point in the mid lane matchup where Echo does get his ulted. See what happens here. Fight around blue buff. Archie gets it though. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Yeah. Dardock might try and dive the bottom lane or gank them. He's going to come in with the tunnel. He knows Jay has no flash. BB, however, is Ezreal. So we're going to walk down the Void Shark. And Dardock will back away. Ollie taking a bunch of damage here. He's already used Unbreakable. And actually, I was thinking about getting involved in the bot lane, but just a bit too slow with Fofo coming down and Povalta in the suit. So. Gonna be backing away. Nothing will result in that. A oh, very aggressive uh, choice from Dada trying to go for that gank without level six in the uh, in the bottom lane from Ash and Brom. Not really any follow up, and at the end the team just ends up taking some damage on the way out. Nothing else really happens from it. But as I said before, like the key point for Echo in this matchup is getting his ulti because then when Syndra uses ulti against the Echo, he just ulties himself and he gets back HP. He doesn't die from the Syndra burst, and obviously with the changes to him, it's even better as AP Echo now to ulti. Compared to before, with the amount of HP you get in return, so good point for Fofo now in that mid lane, and he can start just pushing, 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 and just being annoying because the dash is long enough for him to always reach the Sintra, land the slow with his Q, get a few hits on her, and then just step away. That is the echo. That is Fofo when he's trying to accomplish this game. A little bit down on CS though, because he has been trying to roam with his jungler. Dardoch was uh, putting a lot of attention into that bot lane, trying to make that gank happen, but not today. So we're back to farming in the jungle. Let's take a look at some of the item pickups now, as uh, people have gone back to base. Cody did get the nice timing, so has picked up the BF sword. Bot lane, BB, of course, going for that classic build Ez. And Morning with the great first back of the Hextech Revolver. Such a cost efficient item for allowing him to continue putting up the pressure against Flame. Dardock is coming in. The flash, the nail against the wall, and Flame just 
again, playing out of his mind. I mean, this combo, Dardock Flame here, is definitely something Immortals needs to, like, they need to make it work because that's a, such an important combo for their team during the entire season, honestly, the entire next year we're gonna see. And all the games they played today, whenever they made plays together, they've actually been looking pretty strong. Definitely good synergy between them. No hesitation on the flashes, you know, flash knock up into like flash charge into the wall from flame. Super good setup and an easy kill from them. Nice gank from Dardock. And one thing I, I talked about in the last game with Freak was like, in, the, in this current meta now, uh, what we have seen, uh, at least in the bottom lane, is just how important it is, like, the early game, it, the early laning phase. Right. Uh, and especially, like, the first one and two backs as well, how important they are, because you can't afford to fall behind on items, because then you just start getting pushed into your tower. And then with the TPs from top laners coming in, with roams, with enemy junglers being very aggressive early on, like Lee Sin, like Rek'Sai, diving these bot lane towers are just so, so easy. So if you keep getting pushed into tower, the dive will happen and you will end up dying and lose the tower and your team just falls like two, three thousand gold behind from like basically one or two big plays. And it's really hard to come back from and that's exactly what J Team tried to pull off beforehand. It was so early in the game though that it didn't actually manage to get the tower down, but at least picked up two kills. And that's because they were running like the Karma in this case against the Braum and able to just push in the lane and they got that sheen very early. Sure, and you know, J-Team are not in a bad position in this game whatsoever. 3-1 in terms of kills, no uh, no objectives just yet, but they do have that gold advantage. A lot of it situated on Archie, so he has gone for that early Warriors and tried to accentuate that lead in uh, different lanes as he continues to go for those ganks. So, honestly, uh, J-Team have a very real possibility of winning this game, and we are getting back into game, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, for J Team right now, uh, you can keep playing around bottom side where you have the Karma support against the Braum. And also, you just want to keep getting this Echo farmed up and then get him in a side lane, like once he's hit that first Proto Belt item. Gank in mid! The ward jump into the flash, into the ultimate. Who about to knock into the waiting hand of Fofo, who's trying to chase him down. However, return of the slow and Dardock coming in from the jungle will prevent the kill. Fofo getting knocked up there, already used the phase dive and is being chased down by Dardock. Trying to bait out that ultimate, see if he can burn that one for his mid laner. Not going to happen today though, so nice interaction between the junglers there. Yeah, very important that Paul Bella stays alive. Got two flashes. Oh, bot lane. lane, 2v2 trade going all in here with the ultimate and the enchanted crystal arrow. J dropping very low as Bronx trying to get involved, but the shield keeping him alive. BB there with a body block and the TP as well from the top lane. This could go wrong very quickly for Immortals. This 2v2 trade already resulted in one kill down. Dardock following up into BB as well, looking for that knockup. He's completely out of mana, he's flashless, but Dardock now he underneath this hand, not want to go for it. Popelta blast coning in. Oh, this is risky, Archie's ultimate. coming. Jay very low himself, Archie's coming in. Lands the Q, that's gonna be a one for one trade as Dardock finds the second for the two for one. Cody Sun backing away, but in comes Fofo. Looking for more kills, but now here comes the TP as well. Everyone's backing away from this. They thought it was a good trade, and there's the cancel on the TP on top of that from morning. We've seen the bot lane parties in almost every single game today because everything is around that little tower down the bottom lane. Fofo might actually regret that he ulti back after, but well, he's still in the bot lane with Archie. Archie, he's still has Dragon's Rage. He wants it, knocks him against the wall. Fofo's there to finish him up, but Darlock. An impressive amount of damage from Queen's Wrath will finish off the Lee Sin. And hang on, why is there a Braum top lane flame? Very happy with how this is working out. And Morning just depressed with his life currently. Getting chased down by Parfi. Hammer shot comes out. <laughs> Ollie, I deserve this kill. I went all the way from bot lane for this. So Flame will, flame will let that one happen and push for the rest of the Ollie was the first <laughs> man who died, and therefore he was the first to respawn and run top. So this is after Fofo actually ultied back towards his original location after teleport, so he's not here now, meaning the dive could actually be set up by Immortals. They picked up a few kills from it, and then when Archie and Fofo tried to respawn after, Archie even missed his Q and didn't get to like jump away from Dada. And in the end, they ended up trading one for one there as well, so super even trades. Ton of fighting in the bottom lane, as we've seen so, so often. All started with Immortals playing aggressive, trying that all in, backfired due to teleports. In the end though, they get some kills and they're heading gold because they're winning in these lanes in terms of farm, mid lane, top lane, even the jungle, even though these numbers in the jungle can be hard to count because there's so many small sure. raptors and crooks now that you can look at and they don't give that much gold obviously, but they count as CS. 
So a pro, tri a pro tip for mid laners, if you want to win CS, go take the Raptors. Yeah, that's a, a quick... Uh, a lot of CS for you. <laughs> Obviously your jungler will hate you, but yeah, you're mean, winning on CS, so... Exactly, so the stats don't oh, lie. Oh, TP for morning, none for flame. That means we're gonna get a bot lane dive. I, I feel like I've seen this one before, maybe five or so minutes ago, but this time I'm also trying to react to it. A little too late though, Jay will be coming in there morning and actually both of their ultimates. Dardock reacting as well, trying to get involved, but fortunately they've lost their AD carry. Jay very low, but th still three, four people able to get inside. That tower, Fofo chasing down Poe Belter, looking for that phase dive, lands the time winder, finishes them off, and snaps back to victory. Ollie getting chased down by Morning, that's the kill. Oh, ho, ho. so low as he flashes Fofo. away. And Dardock, what are you gonna do? There's a big mid laner coming down for you. Four kills for one to J Team, and this has just swung back in their favor. Yeah, we have to go back to that big bot lane fight we had earlier with Flame. Channel this teleport, then cancel it. Morning did nothing in the top lane. He got ganked and died, but he kept the TP. And that means, once again, we get this play where the 2v2 range bot lane can push, and they set up an easy dive where they TP in, and the enemy top laner cannot follow. Looks very hard to execute it, and this is just great play by Fofo. He hides around the corner with the ward, sees Pobel, who can't really blindly face check him, and he can just stick to Pobel and kill him, and this is now the second part of the dive where Pobel is dead, Flame is top lane, and in the end they can pick up every single kill. And this meta, like, teleport has been so important for such a long time. Even more important now, when it's not about snowballing your own top lane, but about snowballing bot lane, because every single TP just has to pay off. If you are down a TP, always expect your bot lane to get dope. And it's happened twice now for Immortals. Both times, J team has picked up a lot of kills. Yeah, Morning doing an exceptional job with those TPs. Gotta hand it to him. And also in terms of uh, managing the tower aggro as well, li literally like three people from J Team were like one tower shot away from death. They just juggled it perfectly, kept their flashes underneath that dive, and Immortals coming in two by two, uh, eventually all dropped to them. So in but terms of gold though, it's not a massive advantage, it's only 1,000 gold. Now we have to remember that Flame has been able to sit and farm up top lane, so he has the CS advantage, he's getting tanky. You can already see the damage from Kennen does absolutely nothing against him. And now Flame has the TP advantage. Mm. Obviously Fofo can react, but if Popella can actually push out mid lane with help from Dada and just move bot lane, you set up a, a, a dive with Flame as well. That's a 5v4 in favor of Immortals, and they can do exactly what J-Team did to them, just against J-Team specifically. Try it. it, will be down to the execution, and a lot of flashes down from that last engagement as well. Jay is getting caught out, nice flash, knock up there from Dalek, will chain into the Enchanted Crystal Arrow, and Ali will get involved for the kill. So, nice little pick there, however, hey, Flame's still top lane. Again, this is exactly what we just talked about, you know, make a play on the bottom side after Pobel has pushed up mid lane, so he was roaming as well. And in case a fight breaks out, you TP in with Flame, enemy top laner can't react to get the 4v5, you win it. That means J-Team will never take the fight, and when you create that catch, they just have to leave their, their karma, you know, say, you know what, there's nothing we can do to help you, you just have to go down, and that's just a free kill for Immortals, and able to start Dragon now. So both teams are really trading against each other, and it all depends on who has the TP top lane. Every single time someone has made an aggressive play, they have had the TP advantage. J team also have another TP, so the later it goes when they start trying to execute that 1 3 1. As we mentioned, the champion select for see if they can make that work. Bouncing off of that early game uh, acceleration, I guess, they've got not so much an right. advantage as Immortals are slightly ahead. And that 1 3 1 against the Syndra with the Echo in the last series was really effective. It's going to be less effective now uh, for two reasons. One, Syndra has more targets she can actually one-shot, so Syndra will be more effective in the late-game fight at, at creating a catch, because it's not a tank top, it's a cannon. Uh, that is a fairly easy target, and as a karma support, very easy to take down as well. So there are multiple targets for Syndra to kill now, making her more effective and actually able to force like a play near a tower and just like go for that one kill. And two is, there's an Ash. That means there's an instant long-range engage. And the best tool against 131 comps is being able to like threaten engages. And that's what Ash can do. She can sit mid lane and just threaten to fire an arrow straight down mid lane on Karma, Ezreal, Lee Sin, whoever's sitting there trying to defend a tower, and just force a one shot with Syndra. And then you take a tower and you stop the Echo from being able to just sit in side lane and push 24 7. So, tools there for Immortals to respond. 
against uh, at play later on. But this has generally been a very scrappy <laughs> game here. Uh, we're at 18 minutes, almost a kill a minute. Standard lane meta with yeah. teleports. But it's good to see. We're no longer in a meta where it's just like no kills for 20 minutes. Depends on the teams, of course. <laughs> uh, this is a Mortal State team. I'm sure we had two Korean teams would be in a very different scenario. We would find a way to slow down the game. But Cody's son <laughs> being chased down here by BB. In comes Ollie to try and defend him with a flash after him. Not quite enough damage. Here comes the TP now from Morning. Double flash in from Immortals. Five man bot lane. Uh oh. <laughs> he has no flash. Uh, he does have a ward jump though. Oh, he has J. He'll count as a ward. Dollock coming over the wall. Gets the knock up. Lands the Q there from these Sin. And Kennen's now coming over the ultimate. Lands onto two. Multiple stones coming up. Hollywood, the return ultimate for the disengage. Only really tags one. Banana coming in. Will be blocked out by Braum Shield. And Fofo goes down for the first kill of this fight. Still had that Corona break, but was CC'd out of it. BB now being chased down by Flame. Holly coming in here. And Morning blocking up that last chair coming in. So that would just be the one kill over to Immortals. I love how both teams again are just like fighting bot lane. They're not even fighting over an objective. They're just like chasing each other for kills and then like TPs happen just behind them and suddenly a big 5 on 5 is going on and Immortals winning out here because J team tried to chase into the jungle. They fired so many abilities. And they barely dealt any damage to Flame. He was just kind of sitting there. And then when JT kept chasing, Flame and the rest of Immortals were actually able to like stun lock Fofo and take him down. It's a good response. We're gonna see it again here. They're not fighting over any objective at this point. This is just an open five on five team fight. It's very scrappy everywhere. Archie with a good start. And now the rest of Immortals are like behind down south, except for like Flame coming from north here and trying to like pull up a bit of a flank. They realize suddenly, okay, everyone is kind of split up at the moment. And then look, look at a Poppy in this fight here. That's a lot of stuff being popped. Poppy hasn't taken any damage yet because of a massive shield. Now she's taking damage. Rest of JT are chasing now without cooldowns. Good block on the ult from Oli as well. And then in the end, Fofo actually goes down. Didn't want to show it again. No. It was dirty to look at. Jo Fofo just getting stunned to the wall. But yeah, I mean, like, it really was uh, pretty disgusting. Yeah. Poppy walking through there, literally walked through a, vent, uh, a slicing maelstrom, didn't take any damage. Yeah. Like, cannons wailing on that, nah, it's fine. And Poppy, 102, has been farming this entire game. 183 farm, took his top tower, so he's in great shape. Yep. Uh, BB just checking the, dra uh, the Baron there, actually, with his ultimate, just making sure that Immortals weren't trying anything too tricky, as there were multiple people off the map. And now we have that point where Fofo wants to really start by pushing. He has that protobelt we talked about. Even the Sheen, so like his burst damage against Syndra is extremely high. So you can't really s put Syndra in the side lane to defend against him. She's gonna lose. Instead, what you have to do is once you try to push out the bottom lane, you need to just move that A to carry the Ash into the mid lane with Syndra, like we're seeing here on your screen now, with uh, Cinder and Ash sitting here, and then try and fire an arrow to engage. If you do land land the arrow, you get a guaranteed kill, basically, with so much damage coming from Syndra. And you need to do that to force the Echo to leave the bot lane and run mid lane to then defend and potentially join a fight. And that's gonna be that play where it's like push and pull, basically. When Echo is, is pushing forward, you need to force him to pull back by you forcing a play elsewhere on the map. And if you don't do that, Echo will just push all the way to your tower and then you have to come down and take that wave. And he's forcing you to pull back and not do anything. And it's like, you're constantly challenging each other, being like, now you have to be defensive, now I can be offensive, yep. and back and forth all the time. But again, that's why Immortals are better equipped than we saw Break earlier, because they have Ash to engage. They have TP flying from Poppy to start fights. Try and make that happen. But for now, Fofo not in a side lane because he doesn't have that TP. Uh, Morning, a similar situation. So for now, Immortals don't have to execute that. Yeah, but by Fofo actually going mid lane here, he gives away a free tower on bottom side and he gives away the free push to Cody Sun. So you can take tower and push it out and then run mid and give Immortals like a lot of time actually to set up that potential pick we, we talked about. Fofo is doing nothing in the mid lane right now because they can't siege on Syndra. Syndra will just wave the 24 7. So that's actually a big mistake from Fofo. Godok finding Archie in the jungle. Look at the bot lane. How is Ash still sitting there <laughs> pushing? The because classic Ash split push. Because Echo had to run mid and do absolutely nothing. Yes, he enabled his team to like move topside, but that tower was going to go down very soon anyway. He's by morning, so just pushing much it. time on this tower. It's absurd. Only now does Fofo get down there when it's at 40%. 
So also is going to be very happy with that push. A tower. And now you get an almost another one. Free dragon as well. Like, you just got everything you actually ever wanted as, as mortals. That top lane tower was pretty low anyway and was going to die eventually. And you just got to take bot lane tower, push it all the way out, take a dragon. Pretty good for immortals here with this tier 2 bot lane tower being fairly low now. And now we're just looking for that pick. We're looking for that ash arrow after the recalls. Everyone is fairly low on mana. Everyone has to go back and use some of the gold. And Fintech should be ready as well now from or for the ash. Then you're in a really strong power spike as immortals. And this echo has not been able to do anything in the side lane because he needs to push all the way out and force someone to sit there and fight him. But he has been able to. Oh yeah, but he is still very strong. 3-1 and 2. Has that Lich Bane and the Proto Belt. We saw the damage he can do to Poe Belt when he gets the jump on him. Use those side lane brushes to uh, jump on people. And also Ooh, Echo. BB Fantastic stole in, a, uh, in a side lane with those long lanes. And yeah. <laughs> I gotta yeah, say, that was the ultimate. I didn't even notice. BB has been playing well on Israel. Being super aggressive in the fights in bot lane. Good steal there as well on the blue buff. All it might be caught out, but didn't die. And now we have to look for deep wards from J team. They can TP too, because they will have TP on Echo soon. They have TP on Cannon. They need to have these wards like behind the walls here in the mid lane. They can TP too, so they can kind of walk around the corner and like flank on Immortals. And that's why you can see Immortals put so many like control wards down the river to be like, okay, we know there's no wards here, so you're not going to TP here anywhere. And therefore, we can actually start pushing past the river, because we have all these defensive control wards. That bot lane tower, man. Yeah, it's, it's gonna being go chipped away. Uh, like Ash did 60% of the tower's damage, so now Flame just needs to hit it a couple times. That one ward you see on the screen right now is in case Immortals pushes past the mid lane river to like try and siege on this tier tier two tower, or they want to like move past the river and then to the sides. You can't TP to it. Immortals, however, they're not interested in doing that because they have full river control, so they're starting Baron. And they know that J team have absolutely no vision. Only now that's the ultimate. However, Archie is here. He's lining up the steel, keeping it at 2,000 health. There you go. Uh, they waited out the Q, and there's the ultimate coming across. It's Braum who secures the Baron, though. Archie comes in there, gets the first kill onto Braum himself. Fofo following onto Cody as well. This could be a pricey Baron for Immortals. J chasing them down, leading Pobelta with his snare. And BB in pursuit with Fofo. He's looking to cut them off behind their tower, but for now, three players still remaining with the Baron buff from Immortals, so that was a positive play for the team. Yeah, I actually really like how they played around the Lee Sin, they waited for the Q to expire on Baron, and then they wanted to fire the CC and like stop the Lee Sin from safeguarding into the Baron pit. See here, they stopped DPS on Baron because they wait for the Sonic Wave to expire, and then they wanted to CC the Lee Sin so he actually couldn't jump in in time and steal it. Obviously, they're fairly low because they're taking Baron so early, so they end up actually going down in the fight with two members, but still worth it because you picked up Baron and might get more. Oh, nice stun onto Fofo. Does have his ultimate still, so he will be uh, able to regain some health. But he'll be doing back into them. BB, <laughs> given the hammer from Flame, will be picking up that kill. Jay also down for the count. And Morning now trying to defend this tower by himself pretty much as Fofo will have to take a drip back to base. Really good from Immortals here. Great setup around the Baron and then they pick up a few kills after. That's another tower going down. They're getting absolutely everything. Last time these two teams played each other, it was 27 minutes, and then Immortals had completely stomped the J team. Wouldn't call this game a stomp, but Immortals are definitely looking strong. Very scrappy game indeed. J team have uh, definitely put up a fight, and it's not over yet. Only 6,000 gold separating them, and as Achi is trying to set up a play, five men strong, stack in the mid lane from Immortals. Makes Achi think otherwise. But so will try his best to carry out this wave, but inhibitor down now for. J team, so they'll have to play a little further back as Immortals have full control over the map. Uh, top lane tower is likely the next objective as Dragon is two minutes away. And one of the most annoying things in League of Legends is playing split pushing comps, like 1 3 1 comps, and then fall behind. Because there's so little you can do. You can never really set up side lanes when you're behind because you're always at risk of just getting siege on and caught. See the play from before, uh, straight into the wall. He was knocked back by Scatter the Week, so he's like, ah, oh, I got this. And, uh, only really jumped back to where he was originally, so. Still looked pretty funny. It was uh, unintentionally good from Pro And did look funny, so. Bonus points for that one. Dardock. Starting off this drop. Spike down. 
very interesting play by play commentary. And that's my favorite part. <laughs> and he is uh, auto attacking the Grom. Now he's pushing the minions. He's, he's, he's the auto attacking. Donut will get it. Nice. Stun down to Jay. He's been chained to his and Po Belter exhausted, so not quite enough damage. We'll finish him up with the final Dark Spear. Morning coming in. Hello. On to four players. Hello indeed. Three players from Immortals instantly evaporate. Jesus. What an ultimate. Jesus. I was about to call out how uh, Immortals very clearly hate Jay. They were like using Ash Arrow, Braum Ulti, <laughs> yeah. Syndra Ulti on the poor Karma. Did kill Jay in the end. And then Morning shows up yeah. with the flank. This was with the flank we mentioned with the cannon, with the echo. Really well executed by Jay team. And I guess great job by Jay absorbing all those ultis. Now Morning decides to stay around and that's a no-no. No, and Flame, like if there's any terrain anywhere near you, somehow he'll land a, a charge onto you, a heroic charge. Um, oh, I want to see that team fight again. I just want to see that cannon ultimate, the classic uh, Smeb ult there. We call it the Smeb now, yeah. The Smeb. A good Smeb cannon ult is Smeb. All over the team. Oh, here comes Flame onto Achi. Look at all the damage he's not taking. And uh, Dalek will uh, join his brother in arms. Popo's coming in, he's gonna also try and chunk some puppy, but um, Flame is still not taking any damage. And he's gonna just find Popo, slam him against the wall. He tries to get away, but you don't get away from Flame. Flame's gonna go back in despite being pretty low himself. Knocked into Ollie. He's a pretty heavy uh, heavy bowling ball though. That's the flash, the knockup from Dardup. Another kill. And BB knocked into the wall. You don't screw with Flame, because Flame will kill your whole team. That's no! on to Jay. Oh no. The CC chain, hammer down, flame with the next kill. Four kills in quick succession. And just like that, despite Morning landing the ult of the century, it will not matter. The Immortals will find pick after pick and look to finish off the game. Flame, he was lowest a couple seconds ago, but now he's basically full health again. What a champion. And now he's on to the Nexus with the rest of his team. J team taken out in 30 minutes. Immortals with the first win in this best of three. And it is not often I see a team win and their two carries actually have negative scores. 4-5 for the Syndra and 2-5 for the Ash. But it doesn't matter because they were still getting towers